You know, I want to talk. I know in my last session, we I talked about understanding what is the core issue behind what has you locked into pornography. You know, so often when I listen to people talk about the addiction to pornography and I hear people talk about their story, uh, which everybody has their own story. And I'm so happy that everybody uh, that is able to are capable of finding a way out of the addiction of pornography into a greater place of freedom. But one of the things uh, for many years is I struggled with pornography and I looked everywhere, everywhere in private because I was just too ashamed to come out publicly and tell people uh, that I was struggling, to tell people as, you know, I was growing up and in, 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 in coming up through high school and college. I was afraid to admit to people that I was struggling with an addiction. And, you know, even as I began to move up the ladder in, into ministry as a minister, and, you know, at 25 and 26 and 27 years old, I was still struggling, you know, with this addiction to pornography and I was ashamed to tell people that I was in a private prison and so I would tap into a lot of situations kind of like what you are looking at right now trying to find someone that could give me some element of direction to guide me out of this deep dark pit that when you really think about it I was I was utterly ashamed at sitting in front of a computer for hours looking at pornography. And then the guilt and the shame that comes after you have spent valuable time of your life looking at something that is only making you more tormented up here because you can't even look at a woman and, and see her in the, in the purest way that a woman is supposed to be looked at. You, 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 you find it hard to relate to women without it moving into sex. But that's not even the most shameful part. The most shameful part that uh, we deal with and people who have dealt with porn addiction and it, maybe this is something you're struggling with is the fact that the pornography, it's not even the issue. It's a symptom. As I stated in my last uh, segment, before I can really begin to, and before I could really begin to begin to, to really fight my way back from a 25 to 30 year uh, sentence in prison with pornography and masturbation, which grew into, you know, sex with women. And, and then, you know, as me trying to be uh, all I could be for Christ trying to, to live a life that will be pleasing to God, but I'm still struggling with something that I, this weight that I've been carrying ever since I was eight years old and, and being paralyzed by it. it. It's just, it was just hard for me to come out and talk about it. But now at, at the stage I'm at now in my life, I feel that I feel obligated to share with you um, who may be in need of, the light or some hope of how to break free from the stranglehold that a private addiction to pornography can be doing in your marriage or in your relationships or just in your personal life, um, you know, as a single. And so I want to focus today and this moment with you I'm really examining the core. I, I really had to take some time and, and really think about it, man. Really think about it, woman or whoever. I'm really talking to men or women, whoever is in need. Of, you know, when I think about it, it took me almost 15 to 20 years to really figure out what my problem was. You know, but in, in the beginning part of me figuring out what my problem was coming out of 
an addiction to pornography, I began to study what my father's problem was. And, uh, you know, with my father being um, the father and the leader of a, a large family, I come from a large family. I'm the second eldest of eight children. And my father and my mother had been married for almost 30 years. And 30 years, um, not 30 years you know exactly but in 20 something years before my, my father decided that he wanted to step away from the marriage and he wanted to entertain um, relationships with other women uh, and there had been some infidelity along the way and my mom and my dad felt like it was probably best for him to go his way and she continued to try to guide the ship with eight children now she did the very best she could, and, and he did what he could, you know, at times. But my point, you know, in sharing that is I wanted you to understand that I had to take some time to examine what was happening with my father because I wanted to make sure that what he was dealing with, I wasn't dealing with. Because, you know, it's so often people say it, hurt people hurt people. And I'm finding that now at 43 years old, I'm finding that to be true. Whatever your ism or schism is, or whatever your breakdown uh, in, the, in, the, in the many layers of um, just psychologically, emotionally, physically, all those layers, whatever areas in your life that is lacking the greatest amount of attention or you've been deprived, a lot of times those areas will lead into dependency on in other areas. And like I said the other night, so many people uh, get pulled into uh, food addiction. Many people get pulled into drug addiction. Many people get pulled into sex addiction. And I like to believe that pornography and masturbation and, you know, Vorism, all that stuff is, t is an addiction. And it's going to be important for you, just like I had to, to take time to examine, you know, you, but also examine the history in your family. If there was anyone else in your family that was a close relative, like a mom or dad, who dealt primarily with some of the same issues you dealt with. Uh, because in whatever areas that they were hurt, they probably don't know how to communicate and how to connect in those areas with other people. And if they have children, if they struggle with rejection, they're not probably they're probably not going to know how to communicate love and tenderness and trust toward their children or their spouse. And so that creates other issues. But when I begin to study my father and, and study some of the issues that he had to fight through. That's when I began to realize that my father, his mother died when he was still a boy. My grandmother, she died in her early 40s. And at that time, my father was still a, a, a young boy. I mean, might have been even nine or ten years old. And my grandfather was very, very, uh, a very tough man. He was a businessman and, you know, just, you know, not really... Uh, very emotional, very stern, very tough. And my father was looking for a way of escape from his dad and from the pressure and the, the toughness and the sternness of his father. And he secretly was still mourning his mother. And so what opened the door for his uh, what opened the door to his prison as it relates to sexual addiction is that he would run to women for comfort. And when you don't really understand the purpose of a thing, you will abuse it. And like many men and women, we don't understand the purpose of our sexuality. So we allow it to be used or we use it to get other needs met. And for my father, he used... Uh, sex to to fill the void that he had in him for uh, affirmation, comfort, security, um, a sense of worth, a 
and value. His sexuality was tied into his value and self-worth and things of that nature. But that's something that progressed as he got older. But in the early stages, like many of us who have dealt with porn addiction, it started with a need for some basic uh, areas that we all have. You know, I read this book called The Five Love Languages. And the five love languages is physical touch, words of affirmation, um, gifts, um, acts of service, and quality time. Those five areas are four, five love languages. If those are five elemental areas that every single human being has, and in those areas where we lack, if we lack quality time, if we lack physical touch, someone being in our life to, to, to give us that physical affirmation, uh, someone being in our life uh, to, to dedicate quality time to us so we know that we're valued and we appreciate it. You know, we need people in our life that, to perform acts of service to look out for us as children we need parents and we need loved ones to look out for us when we can't look out for ourselves so that's acts of service gifts makes you feel like you are of some value like you were thought about you you mean something to someone when they give you a gift and um uh i think i said f physical touch words of affirmation uh, quality time acts of service and um words of affirmation everybody needs that in their life and for my father he he lacked that he lacked words of affirmation he lacked quality time he lacked physical touch and so uh an acts of service and so those areas is what created a deep need or chasm for a feeler and sexual sin pornography was a feeler and whenever you've been addicted to anything, whether it's food, drugs, or sex, whenever you hit emotional highs or emotional lows, we always tend to tap into a vice to, uh, 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 to magnify the excitement that we feel or to give us a sense of comfort in times where we're struggling. And that's why I said in the last a session um, that you had to really think about the why why what led you into it and that, that's what I had to come to the understanding of that I became addicted to pornography because I did not have uh, the affirmation that I needed I did not have that quality time that I needed. So in that lack of affirmation and lack of quality time, it left an emotional void, you know, in my life. And when I came across pornography, it tapped into the physical part of me that I didn't really understand. I didn't understand my body as a little boy. But when I was bored or when I when I when I when I just needed something to take my mind off of whatever I was thinking about, it was just something about looking at those images that stimulated something in me, stimulated an excitement. And as I got older, <coughs> it stimulated an, an arousal, and that arousal uh, it, it led to eventually into uh, me moving into masturbation and when that wasn't enough me moving into having sex with girls but the whole point the whole point of the encounter whether it was with masturbation whether it was with pornography or whether it was with a, a young lady all of it was about feeling that need and I just used sex as an avenue to meet that need and so the, you have to come to grips with what it is that you need what is it what area are you suffering from because until you really understand what it is you really need you can sit just like I did for years and years and years and oh I'm so sorry God I'm so sorry for what I did I'm so sorry you know I, I don't want to do this no more and you just repeat the cycle over and over and over again of 
stopping for a month, stopping for two months, stopping for three months, or stopping for a week or two weeks or three weeks, and then you have a relapse and you fall back into it for another, and then you go, so the cycle just keeps repeating itself over and over again. But it, I didn't begin to find some level of hope and freedom until I start being real with myself to examine what was the real issue? What am I trying to fulfill with this? What has created a dependency in me for pornography? I mean, why at 25, why at 30 am I still struggling with pornography? Even when I was dating, and I, and I know that as a Christian, you know, the Bible teaches that we should not have sex before marriage. But I was having sex before marriage. And I still had an addiction to pornography. You know, I'm going to be honest, even in the me getting married, I still had that temptation to look at pornography. And that began to really cause me to have to look deep and say, what is really going on? I have this beautiful wife. Why do I still feel the need to look where I shouldn't look? I, I, I have a relationship with God, but why am I still, I know that technically this is not right. It's not right. I knew it wasn't right when I was really into that addiction, but why couldn't I break free? And it, I believe it started with me taking time to examine what was I really in need of. And so now I have people in my life that I can talk to about that need, that area. You know, I talk to God about that area. I talk to my wife about that area. And so you have to find someone that you can talk to about that area of that area that you have a need that you're trying to use pornography or any other form of sexual addiction to meet. You see what I'm saying? And so that I think in order to begin to move out or break out of the prison that this has put you in, just as it put me in a prison, you have to start there. You can go to all the counselors. You can sit through long counseling sessions. You can sit and beat yourself up over the fact that you've been struggling with this. You can walk around with shame and guilt. But you don't have to do that. You can choose to do that because people just don't understand what it is that you've had to deal with, what it is that you've had to come through in your life, just like I, they didn't know what I had to come through. And so the shame and the guilt came because I didn't want to tell people because I, on the outside, I looked like I had everything together. But on the inside and privately, I was in prison. And that's where you may be right now. But I tell you, it starts with you really taking a deep, soul-searching moment to examine. I really want you to take some time to examine. I want you to reach out to me through EnochUSA at gmail.com or you can go to my website ericlittlespeaks.com and begin to reach out to me, connect with me so I can see how I can be of some support to you and I can know how these first two sessions have helped you begin to stop and look at things differently than you had before. Keep coming with me. Take some time. Really take some time to examine what you really need. And I think we'll be ready to go to the next stage. Until then, stay strong and continue to press. We're going to get here. We're going to get to the end of this tunnel together. <laughs>